Coming up in this captain's vlog, something works. Yeah, man. Until it stops working again. Worked and then it stopped working. I practice taking screen grabs for YouTube thumbnails and we try a new formula. Well, hello. But first, introducing my captain's vlog leaderboard. Here we will highlight those brave and intrepid souls that will help make this captain's vlog possible. You can find links to my Patreon page in the description below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, hello. We're gonna try something new today. <laughs> oh man. So uh, starting off at the end with this video, uh, I have completed my little corner, my little editing nook. Um, got my monitor and some art on the walls. Got my naked lady right there. A little backstory on the naked lady. She uh, was actually one of the first pieces of art that I bought when I first moved to California. I bought this little statue in um, like a, an antique shop in Vallejo, California. Uh, and she was like $5. So I thought she looked really nice right there. So I built her a little shelf and uh, now I have naked ladies on my, my vlog. <laughs> also, it's a little something new is uh, we're going to go through the footage of how we got here together and I'm gonna narrate and kind of organize it as I go through. We're just gonna experiment here a little bit with a different formula, see if it works. It is currently really windy outside and oh, I can turn this up a little bit. Got a little fill light there. It's the wrong color, but never mind. It's really windy outside. You might hear something in the background occasionally, but I think it'll work out just fine. Okay, so first up we have a um, little recap of my solar project. Um, it's been up in the, in, on the boat now for a little while, and uh, I was just giving a little update here. Well, it's raining and blowing in the marina today, and my solar panels have not dissolved. Doing well. A little bit of a wobble when it really gusts up, but like, I really think it's fine. It's well within the limits of the, the strength of the material. Um, it's keeping its shape. I like it. Um, I'm still debating about whether or not to add any more like extra struts, you know, I could add a couple here, I don't know. Uh, I'd kind of like to keep it open if I could because it's a nice view without a bunch of other stuff in the way. But we'll see. So far so good. Still need to hook it up, obviously. But that's not going to affect it structurally, so... There she blows. After I set up the solar panels, I went back to the ranch and uh, started gathering things together for the propane project. Okay, so the first thing on the list was to finish what I started the last in the last uh, captain's vlog, which was to remove the propane tank. And I still had to remove the actual regulator <clears throat> and the um, little solenoid switch that you, the safety switch, and I had to rewire all that. So this is what I'm doing right here. Oh, I lied. First, uh, first thing I had to do was uh, reinstall the tiller. Originally, I thought I was just going to go uh, leave the, the wood plain uh, with no with no kind of covering at all. But I decided that uh, it, it really needed something. So I gave it a coat of uh, or about three coats, actually, of the spar varnish, a spar var Ace Hardware spar varnish, which, uh, yeah, I got at Ace Hardware for like $14 for a quart of this stuff. Um, and it works pretty well. I think I think it'll probably need a uh, another coat um, sooner rather than later. All right, so this is actually me uh, undoing the, uh, the the regulator, and I think the regulator was bad on this because as soon as I put the new one on, the stove started working better, and uh, like the the gauges would work, um, and also the little um, Dickens heating stove over there worked much better. So I think that the regulator was either the wrong one to begin with, or um, it was 
it, it had failed in some way. Taking apart the system was pretty easy. Most of the fittings came right out. There was one that gave me a little bit of trouble. A little blast of uh, WD-40 and I had it off in no time. So the next thing I wanted to do was actually create like a, um, a tabletop surface. So when the, the propane tank was fitted into the milk crate, <clears throat> that I had some usable space on top of that. So back at the ranch, I cut out all the parts for that uh, little table, the tabletop and the legs. And I also um, reused, uh, like there was a, 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 a like a, a cup holder that was holding like an air horn um, that I took out from the inside of the boat. And uh, instead of just throwing it away, I uh, repurposed it for my little table. So here I am just kind of fitting everything into place and seeing if it goes. Uh, that's my pre-cut board. I've sanded it down, but it's not finished uh, yet. Those are the legs right there. Fitting those into place to make sure everything kind of goes where it's supposed to go. And then I uh, marked where the legs were. That's how I measured it up. I didn't really use a, a tape measure or anything. I just eyeballed it and then uh, drew out the lines. I bought a, a set of metal hinges from the hardware store for like $8 and uh, used those to fasten the legs to the tabletop. So the trickiest part of this job was actually uh, when I had um, all but two of the legs on. It was very difficult to get in there with the screwdriver to actually screw in the hole. So I um, found a screwdriver and took care of that problem. When the table was all put together, it was a little bit wobbly if you just kind of sat on it by itself. But once you slid it down inside where the propane tank is supposed to be, um, like I'm doing here in the video, uh, it became very, very stable. You can even sit on it, no problem. Next step was to put some sort of varnish on it. Uh, I just used the same spar varnish that I just used on the tiller. I had about uh, three quarters of a can left and I ended up using the entire whatever's left in that can on this little project. This probably took the longest and was my my least favorite uh, part of the job. I just don't like working with this stuff. It's all sticky and horrible. And if you look at it the wrong way, it, it doesn't look right. So you have to redo it. And anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm happy with the final product, but uh, it could already use like a quick sanding and uh, another coat. The next job was to actually secure the actual milk crate so that it couldn't slide around at all uh, in the the stern. It's not a stern. The stern locker is behind the actual propane tank. So that little, I don't know what you call that. Somebody else could tell me that. That would be great. To do this, I had to actually drill into the boat, which was not pleasant, but uh, I figured I, I used these little stainless steel pad eyes that came with the Bimini set and I used some little rubber washers in there so I think it's it's fine. What I wanted is something to like basically that I could zip tie the 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 milk crate to so that it didn't slide back and forth and I didn't want to put any holes in the actual floor itself. So I'm trying, I was trying to avoid actually installing something in the floorboard or the floor area there. Um, I figured this would be a, a, a less destructive way of, of adding a secure point to the boat. Threading the cables through this thing was a piece of cake. It wasn't that difficult. It got a little bit more tricky when I, tr I tried to put the cap on here in a second, but uh, I just put in the four bolts and uh, like it was before, didn't add anything. Uh, you know, again, this is kind of a removable solution. So um, here I am putting on my cap. This is just a PVC elbow joint and another PVC kind of sort of elbow joint that screws into the other one. Um, I had a bit of a problem there actually like screwing it into place. I found the best way to do it was to actually remove the elbow first, uh, screw them together, uh, and then you could let the, the cables inside kind of twist on their own. And then once you had that screwed on there the way you want it, you just kind of shove it onto the deck right there and it's pretty secure uh, and doesn't look that bad. Next up, I had to rewire the, the actual solenoid switch. So 
At first I thought I was going to use my Ryobi soldering iron uh, and my little XT60 connectors, but uh, for some reason my Ryobi uh, soldering iron was not getting hot enough for the job. This has happened twice now with the soldering iron and I'm, um, I'm not very happy with it. Uh, that's just a little side review of a, of a piece of equipment for you. <laughs> Um, so what I ended up doing was using these little um, cable connectors, the crimp on. Here I am with a heat gun trying to um, seal all that up so it's nice and water protective. Uh, I basically did the same thing to the other end, crimping on these little connectors. At that point I uh, wired it up and tested it out and it, it functioned so I uh, took out the heat gun and shrink wrapped all that up so it's nice and secure. Here's a little test with um, the varnished table and I'm adding this little cup holder to the top for a very specific reason. Um, I foolishly tried to screw these screws in from the top down like this and if I had to do it again I would just I would obviously do it from the bottom up so you couldn't see the screws whatsoever. A little update I've been busy all day it's been super windy in the marina and uh, just not really great for talking to camera. Um, just want to show you my progress. I got the, uh, the little solenoid switch uh, mounted to a piece of wood that's mounted to the uh, milk crate. The milk crate is mounted into the back of the boat via these little pad eyes that I put in there. Um, got my new gas cable with um, a little thing on it there. Um, everything's run through. I want to clean up these wires a little bit when I get a chance, but right now I just want to see if everything functions. So this fits snug Snug as a bug on a rug. And then this guy. Excess. Here we go. Turn it on. No smells. And we've got green there. So now let's go inside. Okay, so there's the little red switch that you flick um, when you want to use the gas and propane. The red means that it's on or functioning. And you can actually hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a click when you flip the switch, there's a click and that's that little solenoid thing opening up the line. So now we're just gonna try. I got junk everywhere. We're just gonna try it out here. See what we got. Yeah, man. Hmm. Okay worked and then it stopped working. There it goes. Probably some air in the line had to be pushed through. I can make dinner. So with the propane system done and dusted, uh, I moved on to other jobs, specifically the first one I moved on to was building this little shelf here for my uh, naked lady friend, uh, and here's that. So again, like I said, this was a piece of the boat that I, uh, that I removed from my bed area, because um, it was hitting me in the legs at night and wasn't really serving much of a purpose, and I uh, decided to stick it on the wall back here and so I was just basically cutting out the right shape so it would fit around um, this like spar thing in the corner. I don't know what you'd call it. So it was a bunch of back and forth, shaving off a little bit more, taking a look at it. Running back downstairs, eyeballing it a bit more. Coming back out. shaving off even more. I think it took me like three tries to get it done. So now the shelf uh, fits snugly in the corner right there and I can just uh, basically screw straight in and 
there is the finished product. Another job I wanted to uh, finish up was actually um, finishing the solar panels. I know that that was in the previous whatever, but uh, uh, none of the actual caps themselves were, were secured to their posts, if you know what I mean. They were basically just forced on and were holding on by friction alone. So theoretically they could wiggle themselves free or um, you know, all kinds of bad things could happen. So I wanted to secure that stuff and I specifically didn't want to glue it. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want to glue it because if you glue it, then you can't ever take it apart. Uh, and I, there's the, re the reason I put it together that way is so that I could adjust it and, and uh, change it if I needed to. So, so I needed to add those screw in lockdowns because I decided to use screws. Uh, but first, here I am actually hollowing out the inside of an extra bimini cap that I had. And this was like a, a, a bimini cap with a little pad eye on the end of it. And what I decided to do was use two, I have two of those left, and so I wanted to put those on the back, um, the back spar, and then use those to be able to tie an X on the back to give it a little bit more stability. I know I said that I wasn't gonna do it, but uh, it's been super, super windy here the last few days um, and I do watch it wiggle around occasionally and you know so I, I wanted to take care of that and uh, this is how I did that I had to actually like grind out some of the interior of these little caps because they didn't want to fit over the end of the PVC pipe frame that I built the way I got the caps on the on the previous build was by heating up the PVC pipe with a heat gun but of course that didn't work uh, as well this time because there was a dowel rod in the middle but uh, here I am heating up the end as much as I can in the really, really gale force wind. Uh, and then slamming this like, uh, I don't know what you call the end, the bimini end cap onto the end of my solar panel arch there. Those are the screws that I was using to lock everything in place. These are stainless steel screws, I believe. Uh, They're like maybe a three quarters of an inch long, not very long. Uh, here I am measuring out uh, some uh, paracord to be used as these like back, I guess you call them stays. They're solar arch stays. You see me running it up at an angle. I used a little trailer hitch to, to tighten it off with. Uh, did the same thing on the other side. Um, tensioned it down, you know, so it's nice and tight. And it actually makes a world of difference. It, it really, it really steadies the whole thing up. So here's a few shots of the finished work that I've done. Uh, you'll see a bottle there. We'll get to that in just a second. But uh, one of the nice things about the setup is you can actually see the uh, gauge right there. To, you can see that from the cockpit so you know how much fuel you have. Here's a close up of the screws that I used, uh, how I tied in the actual corners. You can see how that's pretty simple. Um, those aren't going anywhere. Um, and then here is a close up of the actual caps on the back rack solar rack thing and uh, my my trucker hitch tie downs um, and it really does stiffen the whole thing up quite a bit it works great so you may have noticed like uh, in the previous shot that there was this like kind of bottle contraption set inside the new cup holder that i put on there um, this is actually me doing that um, i i this is just a little fun light that i have on the back of the boat it has no real practical purpose other than it looks nice um, and it kind of gives you a little bit of usable light in the cockpit at night, I suppose, but uh, I haven't experimented with this underway. I have no idea if it'll last. So the idea is just basically a little solar string of lights shoved into a colored bottle. I know it's brilliant, <laughs> but it works quite well. I like, I like the effect, like fireflies in a bottle. So here I am just relaxing a little bit, admiring my work for the day. And uh, there are a couple shots here of uh, my little fire jars of fireflies uh, on the back of the boat at night. The little GoPro doesn't do very well in the dead of night. So um, that's what I got. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching my captain's vlog. And uh, let me know what you think about this new format in the comments below. I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, it might be overly complicated. I do normally do a voiceover when I make my videos, so um, this is kind of like doing a voiceover, but in real time as we're watching the footage together, so nothing is written down. It's just kind of off the cuff. Um, 
it, it's an interesting way of doing it. I, I kind of see this like uh, background environment working more for like planning adventures, you know, like putting up maps and, and doing that sort of content, but uh, we'll see. It's an experiment as usual. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you've liked or subscribed already, thank you so much. If you haven't, please consider doing so. It means the world to us uh, who are out here making this kind of content. So uh, thanks so much for getting involved.